Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal fatigue recovery ninja and I want to welcome you back to another edition of Your Adrenal Fix. Today I wanted to talk to you about chronic pain. Chronic neck pain, chronic back pain, chronic shoulder pain, chronic musculoskeletal pain, whatever pain you may be suffering with, the bottom line is you have inflammation in the body. And because the adrenal glands are the main stress organs, their job is to settle inflammation. A lot of the times I'll explain to patients, the adrenal glands and the cortisol that it secretes is kind of like the clutch of a car. So when you have to switch gears and you have to go from a high speed to a low speed, you have to downshift. Or if you have to go from a slow gear to a fast gear, you have to upshift. And if that clutch is working properly, you're going to have a smooth ride. And if it's not working properly, you're going to jump forward or you're going to jump back and it's not going to get in gear properly. And that's kind of the equivalent to your body with cortisol and adrenal glands. However, what also happens is the, the adrenal glands secrete cortisol. And if you've ever had pain, you've taken a steroid, cortisone, uh, whatever it may be, that's the exogenous or the out of the body equivalent to what we produce inside the body. So if the adrenal glands are working properly, they're going to settle inflammation really, really nicely and you're going to do better. However, if the adrenal glands aren't working properly, they're not going to settle inflammation very well and you're going to have continuation of pain. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to you today about a case study that I have in my office. I had a lady come into me and she was in extreme pain. I mean, she was probably a 20 out of 10 she could barely sit down she had a lot of problems and so we had a consultation and we started to work together and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to explain what's been happening she says she's about 80% better she is six weeks into her care plan and really for the most part what we've been doing is we've been focusing on her gut health and so we put her on a six week removal diet we determined what foods she was reacting to we looked at her adrenal glands we also did blood work and we got a good idea as her clinical picture. One of the main things that we saw was she had unsteady blood sugar. She was at 102 before we began with glucose and her cholesterol was 492 and her triglycerides were 433. And she is insulin resistant at that point. And so what we did is we put her on this six week cleanse and we just did a new set of blood work. And the new set of blood work showed that her triglycerides have come down from 433 to 257. Mind you, this isn't taking any cholesterol lowering medications. Um, her cholesterol went from 492 to 375, so it's still elevated. However, her blood sugar went from 102, now it went to 91. So she's getting a better handle of her blood sugar. She's 80% better, but she's not out of the woods yet. And that's what I want to explain to you today because the main markers of inflammation are still present in her body. And I want you to get an idea on what those markers are. The first one is uric acid. I'm sure you've heard of that before. She was going through the roof with uric acid. Her uric acid was above 10 when she first started. There's a difference between a healthy range and a functional range. The healthy range is anywhere between 3.2 to 5.5 for a female and 3.7 to 6.0 for a male. That's the functional range. The laboratory range, so what you're being compared to every other person that took that lab test the last year and you're being compared to whether you're sicker than they are and, and they're not really the most healthy people to base a sample on and they, the, the range is 2.5 to 7.0 and she was at 6.4 so you can still see she would be inside the ranges of the laboratory but she's outside the ranges. Of the, um, of the functional. In fact, she had uh, rheumatoid factor and she has uh, joint pain. So she's got an autoimmunity and her joints are typically the site of target when your immune system is, is going haywire and you're not controlling the inflammation. So we still have to do a better job of bringing her inflammation down from that point of view. Her homocysteine, uh, when you look on the lab ranges, it says 0 to 15. I mean, if that's not ridiculous, I mean, don't you think 1 would be something wrong with 1 versus someone who had 15 or 16? So number 1, that's ridiculous. The functional range is 7 to 9, and she's at 13.1. So that is too high. That's an inflammatory uh, uh, acute phase reactant that's going to create uh, inflammation and pain in her body, and we have to manage that. That's 
for another video, but that has a lot of genetic relationships to why homocysteine and methylation and B12 absorption and, and methionine. That's We're not going to get into that, but suffice to say, we're running metabolic tests on her that will look at her genetics so that we can see where her deficiencies are. So that's another side of inflammation. C-reactive protein, you've probably heard of that. From a lab range, this is one of the only ones that the range is actually the same between the functional range and the, and the lab range. So it's 0 to 3 on both areas. And she's 5.2. So she's got some inflammation going on in her body, and she's still not out of the woods yet. So what do we do? What do we do if she still has inflammation? Well, we can still try to clean up her gut, uh, and, and we do very well with that. But we want to be more specific, and we want to hone in on where the inflammatory sources are coming from because ultimately, that's what's causing the adrenal glands to not shift gears properly, and it's continually like the dam or like the, um, the blown pipe in the Gulf Port when there was that oil spill. There's oil spewing out somewhere in her body, and we need to address the source. And so the first place to look is white blood cells. And in her case, or in anyone's case, if you look at your lab test, you'll see that the white blood cells, whether it's neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, basophils, they don't even show you a healthy range. It doesn't even say a percentage. Um, but 40 to 60 percent is the optimal range for neutrophils. 25 to 40 percent is the optimal range for lymphocytes. Uh, monocytes is 4 to 7 percent. And eosinophils are 0 to 3%. And depending on where she's skewing is will give us an idea on what areas we may need to target or look forward to. For example, in her, she had, um, her neutrophils were originally above 60 and now they're below 60. And that tells me that we've done a good job of at least trying to address the acute bacteria type of stressors that are in her gut. If she had higher lymphocytes, then we know that there would be possibly a viral type of problem. And we would look to other things like liver enzymes or kidney uh, proteins or electrolytes. Um, monocytes were elevated. That's just a general marker. Could be li could be liver. Uh, it could be bacteria, virus, parasitic. Typically, if we see the eosinophils and the monocytes trend upwards together, we're looking at uh, pot potentially a parasite and addressing that and 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 getting her off of potentially raw foods and helping her digestive tract. Um, the next area to look at is her red blood cells. And we can tell a lot of information based on how big these cell sizes are. Red blood cells are really the only cells of the body that as they mature, they get smaller versus as other cells mature, they get bigger. So if we take a sample of the blood and we see that their average size is bigger than normal, they're not maturing properly. And in order to mature, we need to have B12 and folate. Not folic acid, but folate, and that's another 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 video. Um, in her case, she was trending high on that, and that means that she has unabsorbed B12 or folate acid that's getting into her cells. And so the problem with that is is that it's not going to mature the red blood cells. And so that points to more of a gut issue, and we know we still have to fix that gut. Um, so in that case, and then we look at her liver enzymes, and her liver enzymes were fine. So, so typically we're assuming, or we could do further tests. We could do stool samples. We can do cultures of of um, of viruses. We can do a bunch of different things. But at the end of the day, it comes down to what are you going to do about it. So in her case, we gave her some hydrochloric acid to help her digest or break down her proteins uh, a lot better, and that will also allow her to absorb B12 a lot better and mature her red blood cells and get rid of inflammation in the gut. We also helped with um, a little bit of uh, a potential uh, parasitic slash um, yeast slash um, healthy bacteria for her gut to help her out. And so, you know, look towards not just taking painkillers and, and doing massages or doing chiropractic care or doing um, physical therapy or exercising. Those are all great things and those are things that I always did with patients. But sometimes patients, no matter what you do, they're still going to suffer. And that's because they have metabolic imbalances inside their body. They're not converting food into energy. They have a lot of inflammation. And we 
really need to track down the source of the inflammation. And so hopefully you found this uh, enlightening in, in that you need to look at your blood tests a little bit differently because if you're looking at them from the lab ranges, it's too broad and you're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, and you're not going to identify potential information that's going to tell you where you can look to next. And so in her case, her inflammation is still present. The main markers are uric acid, homocysteine, C-reactive protein. Those are real big ones. Even insulin is a big one and glucose is a big one. Uh, hemoglobin A1C. These are all acute phase reactants in her body. And so hopefully you found it enlightening for you today. I hope you enjoyed this edition of your Adrenal Fix. Look at my website. It's called Adrenal Fatigue Society. Please give this a share, a like, or a comment, and I hope to help you in your adrenal nightmare. Thank you so much.